Mm. Hi ho, Kermit the Frog here. In today's video, we're gonna see if we can turn a grease fire into a bar of soap. <laughs> Guys, we're here with Joseph from Good and Basic, and he had an idea that we just thought sounded like so much fun we had to try it out. Give us the quick rundown of what you're thinking is gonna happen today. Yeah, so what we are going to do is we are gonna make soap, and we're gonna do it in a way that you've probably never seen before, and that is we are going to light a giant grease fire, then put it out with a fire extinguisher, and at the end of that, we are going to have soap. Here's the basic idea. We're going to see if we can set a grease fire and then use the right kind of fire extinguisher to turn that grease fire into soap something we can use to clean ourselves. The way this actually works is that a soap is an incredibly simple, easy thing to make. It's just a mixture of a strong alkali and then also a fat. And so the grease fire is going to supply the fat and then the fire extinguisher, which we're gonna talk about in a moment, is going to supply the alkali. And those two will combine in the grease fire and actually make soap. You know, just ordinary soap that you can wash your hands with. Soap, soap, the kind of soap you all use. So what defines soap? We were discussing this a minute ago, like uh, antibacterial versus regular soap, sure. but what is soap? So soap is a salt of a fatty acid. And what that essentially means is that you take these strong alkali salts like potassium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, potassium carbonate, sodium carbonate are the most common ones, and then you mix it with a fatty acid, and the fats supply the fatty acid. The fats have this glycerol backbone and then fatty acids stringing off of it. Okay. And so the alkali is gonna rip those fatty acids off and turn them into soap. So here we have four pounds of lard. I was thinking it was gonna be in separate one pound blocks, but it's not. That is beautifully gross. Let's just uh, let's see what happens if I just... <laughs> there we oh, go. No. <laughs> that worked great. That's so much. Yes. It's uh, hard to see in this light but that is now going. We can hear it. We can feel it. There's definitely some warmth coming. And we're just going to let our lard melt down and then keep going. Somewhere between, I think, 400 to 800 degrees. So, Okay, so here we have two different fire extinguishers. And this one is a lot like kind of the normal ones that you'll see, right? And then this one, probably many of you have not seen before. Um, it's a larger one. Often these K-type fire extinguishers are silver. So different fire extinguishers are rated for different kinds of fires. And this is very, very, very important because if you throw water on a grease fire or an electrical fire, you will make the problem bigger, not smaller. And we've actually done examples of that in the past when we've uh, deep fried turkeys, we deep fried water bottles just to see that explosion happen. So normally in your uh, house, you're going to have what's called a class ABC fire extinguisher. They're the most common to find, commercially available, but these are class K, is that right? Yes, this one is class K. So this K-type fire extinguisher is really kind of the star of the show here. What it is loaded with is water and potassium carbonate. And potassium carbonate is one of those strong alkalis that we talked about that is going to combine with the fat and make soap. Okay. When, we, when we say alkali, that's the same as saying it's basic, meaning the opposite of acid. Uh, acid is corrosive on one side of the pH scale, basic or alkali is up the other side of the scale. And then this, which is, as Callie said, an ABC type extinguisher is actually loaded with sodium bicarbonate. Which is and baking soda. Yeah, so this is literally just loaded with baking soda and we're just gonna hose down the fire with baking soda. Perfect. Like spray baking soda. Just all pressurized over it. baking soda. Yeah. So this is soap made out of sodium bicarbonate, right? And you can feel it's oh, kind of like greasy and it's slippery. Squishy. Yeah. I wasn't expecting squishy. So this is baking soda soap. It doesn't smell like uh, your regular soap. Mm -hmm. It's not really a pleasant smell. No, and it's in general not very good soap. If you use it on your hands, you'll find that you can feel the difference between this and soaps that you get from this. But if I I can like wash this off. Now. Oh yeah, like this will wash it. germs off your hands. This okay. this little brown concoction here. That's all you how, need. How well does it do with just washing dirt off? Oh, very well. Yeah, I've tested it. I'll try just water first, and if that takes it all off, then this isn't a great test. But all right, that took a lot of it off, but I still have some black staining on my hands there. Let's let's grab a little bit of this. So what did you use as the oil for this? Uh, lard, soap? ordinary lard like what we're using today. Lard, oh, wow. we're, uh, we're getting a, not a lot of lather. We don't have like laurel sulfates and whatever <laughs> sodium stuff in here, but rubbing it all over my hands, a little more water in there. Uh, I definitely feel like that has taken off more of the charcoal. So this right here isn't gonna come off. This is not from the charcoal, this is from super glue with graphite on it from earlier in the day. That's not coming um, off ever. No, I would need acetone for that. Uh, but all of that charcoal seems to just wash right off. So baking soda and 
lard that's to clean correct. hands. Yeah. The chemical process there is a little bit more complex and it's not as high quality soap, but it is soap. All right, I'm very curious about this one. I wanna see what this is like. Yeah, so this one has been made from lard and potash. and It's, it's very black, as you can see. It's not wow. the ideal color, but it is soap. And you can even feel it on your hands. And as soon as you run it under the water, you'll feel the slipperiness and you'll be like, oh my gosh, that's soap. First off, not normally the color you want your soap <laughs> to be. Mmm, I feel so clean. Yeah, that feels like soap now. Again, like Nate said, there's not really a lather, but it's it's so weird. It feels greasy, but it comes off so easily. Yeah, so the issue with the grease is that this batch, I actually mix slightly higher in fat. There's a question in soap making. Do you mix? If you're gonna, you know, you can't ever get the reaction exactly right. You're never gonna get the ratios exactly right. So would you rather put in too much alkali or would you rather put in too much fat? And the answer is you would always rather put in a little bit too much fat. And the reason why is that there's a little bit of fat you know, it just feels a little greasy, it's fine. But if you put in too much alkali, it becomes caustic, it can sting your it can eyes, hurt ya. it can hurt your eyes. And so it's definitely, this is actually called super fatting. It's definitely more important to put in a little bit more fat than you put in alkali for soaps that you use. Okay, now what I'm noticing now is that my hands do feel more moisturized. There's definitely still sort of a grease layer, but my main concern is I smell like bacon. So one of the greatest inventions we've had related to soap making is making it smell good. I think okay. we can all agree. <laughs> I think so. So you were saying that another really cool thing is the difference between bar soap and liquid soap. Yeah, so you've used bar soap, you've used liquid soap, but like what's the difference and how do you get one, not the other? And the answer is actually, it depends on whether you're using a sodium alkali or a potassium alkali. And so if you're using so sodium hydroxide or sodium carbonate, you're actually gonna get a hard bar of soap. The liquid soap is made by using potassium hydroxide or potassium carbonate. So this, for example, that's potassium based, you can see it's like super slippery. It's very close to being a liquid soap. Okay. Right? But if we had made this out of uh, sodium, then we'd actually have like an actual bar. So another thing that's making a big difference here is actually the heat of the reaction, the fact that we're doing it with a grease fire. Now you can make soap using what's called the cold process or the hot process, and it's the exact same chemicals it's the exact same ingredients. The only difference is the temperature, hence hot cold, cold and hot. Yes. Okay. And so the reason why you would want to do the hot process is it actually speeds up the reaction. There's a rule of thumb in chemistry that for every 10 degrees Celsius that you boost the temperature of the reaction, you double the speed of the reaction. Oh, there it is, boiling over. Okay. I no longer feel safe picking that up and moving it. Please don't. Okay. So a cone so shape. on it. Well, put it out nicely. You are spraying foamy oil everywhere. So, okay, so see that reaction? Yes. Do you see those bubbles Foaming right there? and bubbles. That's what I see when I make soap. Okay, so that's a good that sign is a very that we're getting good the sign. right reaction. Yeah, and I'm actually, I'm gonna give it a little bit more, but Wait. you actually... At this point, I can move it somewhere that isn't on your stove. You actually don't need very much of your alkali solution to make soap. The ratio for sodium bases is something like eight to one, So should roughly. I be stirring it now? Um, you know, stirring it would be a great thing to do right now. You know, once uh, I have this super this is, high This is what I normally do when I start kitchen fires. Legitimate right, I start stirring, stirring stick. Yes. You know, and again, the really unique thing about this is, like I said, it's hard to make a good soap. Mm -hmm. It's really easy. If you just want to make a little bit of soap, it's really easy. And so, like, even if you've put in too much alkali, you'll still have soap. Even if you put in too much fat, you'll still have soap. It'll just be a low quality soap. We just need to let it cool and then it's done. Now, when people make soap industrially, you know, if you're really serious about it and you want to make like actual good soap, mm -hmm. then what you'll do is you'll actually let it cure for days or weeks. Our second grease fire of the day. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, well. Do you hear that? Okay, yeah, that was what I was thinking was gonna happen, was that we were gonna spray soap everywhere. So we're still getting some of the same foaming, but way less of it. Yeah. Uh, and I assume that's because the baking soda, uh, sodium bicarbonate, is not nearly as reactive, nearly as basic as our, our first fire extinguisher. That is correct. All right, we have soap A and B. We've got a lovely brown color and a lovely black color. We seem to have rather burnt Yep. our second soap. Well, yes and no. Yes, it's got that slippery soap feel, but it's not really wanting to... I mean, yeah, it we, we toasted still that good. <laughs> seems to be working. Like, it's mm -hmm. still getting stuff off of my hands. Yeah. Again, water does some, but it usually leaves more residue behind than this. This one is goopy. All right. So this is our lard soap. Smells like lard. Water alone first and see what that doesn't get rid of. So I've still got stuff down in my thumbprints, handprints, all that stuff. This doesn't want to come off at all anymore. 
there's a lot of wax. You can actually see the water beating Greasy. up on my hands. So we probably could have added a little bit more of our hydroxide mm -hmm. stuff. So your soap, I think, is a little more effective than our soap. Yeah, that's just a question of balancing the right ratios, right? Uh -huh. Like, even with this we've made, you know, you can feel the slipperiness. You're like, uh -huh. oh, okay, that, that is soap. It's just that it has this heavy, greasy resin. Yes. So yeah, what do you guys think of the uh, fire extinguisher soap? I am impressed. I don't plan to use it regularly. But it does work. But it was cool to watch just how quickly it started reacting, foaming. And as you explained at the beginning, like, that's how this works. That's why this kind of fire extinguisher puts out the fires, is it stops being a flammable oil. It turns it into soap, which just doesn't burn the way oil does. Yeah. It's that cool to explore. That is really cool. Thank you, Joseph, for showing us this. Guys, that is it for today, but we've always got new great stuff coming out. Go ahead and hit that button right there to subscribe to the channel so you never miss out on a cool video, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.